Welcome everybody. And um, today we've got a webinar on utilizing JMC's health medication log. It is November 29th, 2023. My name is Rachel Cox. I come to JMC with a little over 10 years in the college classroom. I taught college writing and humanities courses. And then I spent a few years as, as an administrator at a small Catholic elementary school. Um, I'm joined today by Linda. Linda, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Linda and I'm in the Brainerd Lakes area up by the Cross Lake area and I've joined JMC back in March and I have worked with JMC as an office person in one of the school districts and I'm happy to be joined by Rachel. Thank you, Linda. Making the most of your medication log. JMC's medication log allows for the recording of student medications, inventory appointments and treatments. A list of FDA approved medications is included in the med log. If you wanna track usage of non FDA approved user defined medications, such as throat lozenges, lotions, or homeopathic remedies, you may add your own user defined medications to the list. So today what we're gonna walk through is how to add user defined medications, enter student medications, manage medication inventory, and create medication appointments. Um, the, the medication log is just a really great tool to help you keep all of those um, medications that you're distributing throughout the day on a daily basis, just to keep those organized um, for, for each student, but also keep your inventory up to date. It's just a really useful tool. Um, if you could hold all of your questions until the Q&A session at the end of each section, you can go ahead and throw those questions in the chat feature and then we will we will get to them. Linda's going to be watching our Q&A today. Um, we'll get to them at the end of each section. We are going to start with adding user defined medications. JMC's health module simplifies the process of logging medications by offering a comprehensive list of FDA approved medications, as well as the ability to define and add user defined medications such as throat lozenges or homeopathic remedies. This ensures that medications can be easily administered in the health office to cater to the specific needs of students. So you can log into JMC office, select health, medication log, define medications to add or edit user defined medications. So that first step, you want to click the add record link to enter a new user defined medication or click the edit link to edit an existing user defined medication. Step two, enter a name for the medication in the name field to define your newly added medication. Step three, and this is an optional step, you can enter a strength for the medication in the strength field to record the strength of the medication in one dose. Step four, click the update link to add or update your changes to the medication or click the cancel link to discard that new medication. A helpful tip, if you'd like to delete a user defined medication from the log, click the delete link to permanently remove it. So we'll take a live look here at adding user defined medications. Okay, so I pulled up um, my office home page here. I'm gonna come down to health, medication log, and define medications. So here's my list um, of user defined medications. So I can click the add record to add a new one, or I can um, edit next to one of these to, um, to edit an existing user defined medication. So I'm just gonna edit cough drops here and maybe I'm going to add a strength and I will just say maybe one, one drop. And I can update that to save my changes. Or again, if you, I wanted to add a new medication, I could do so right here. Um, these are just kind of for those over-the-counter type of things, not necessarily an FDA-approved medication that parents want their, their students to have throughout the day. And that's kind of it for our user-defined medications. It's pretty straightforward. Do we have any questions on that, Linda? There are no questions. All right. Then we will keep on moving on. And we'll talk about entering student medications. In JMC's health module, managing student medications is streamlined and effective. Health professionals can easily add or edit a student's medication list, ensuring accurate recording and administration. Detailed information such as medication details, dosage, and instructions can be entered, enabling tracking of medication usage, monitoring of supply levels, and generating reports as needed. 
Additionally, features like low inventory notifications and the ability to print or export the medication list provide convenience and accessibility. To add or edit a medication record, go to Health, Medication Log, Edit Student Medication, and select the Medications tab. So step one, you um, enter a student's name in the find field, or else you can select that from the drop down list or select the student's name from the drop down list. Um, a helpful tip, place a check mark in the display optional fields checkbox to enable and track additional medication fields such as the pharmacy name, prescribing doctor, and prescription number. Step two, click the red, I'm sorry, click the add row button to add a new medication for the student. So once you've found your student here in the find box, um, you can add a row to, to add a new medication for that student. Step three, click the edit button to enable the editing of the medication information. Step four, select the medication using the medication drop down list to assign a medication to the student. Next, you can enter the medication form in the form field to indicate what type of medication the student is taking, such as capsules or a liquid. So here you have this medication drop down list. You, you, if you start typing in the medication that was submitted to the health office, you get a whole list of FDA approved medications, which I'll show you in the live look. And then this form just kind of helps um, whoever's distributing that medication know what the form is that they're giving to the, to the student. Step six, place a check mark in the notification threshold enabled checkbox if you'd like to be notified of low inventory. Then you can enter the quantity in the notification threshold field to receive a notification when inventory drops below that specified quantity. Step eight, enter a date in the date submitted field or simply click the calendar icon to indicate when the medication was submitted to the office. Step nine, place a check mark in the as needed um, PRN checkbox if that medication is only administered as needed. Um, helpful tip, you can place a check mark in the student no longer taking this medication checkbox when that student no longer needs that prescribed medication. Step 10, you can enter any notes in the comments field to track additional information for future reference. Um, this can be really important for school nurses or front office people to just help communicate any additional information about that medication with whomever it is that's going to be um, distributing those medications throughout the day. Because it's not always the school nurse. The school nurse isn't, um, it can't always be there all day long. Uh, step 11, you want to click the update button to save the medication information for the student or click the cancel button to discard your changes. Step 12, click the print button on the medications tab to print the list of medication records for the currently displayed student or click the export button to export the list of medication records as a CSV file. So we can take a live look at entering student medications here. Okay, so again, in um, JMC office, I'm still here in the health module under medication log, and I'm going to edit student medications. So the first step is to find your student here in the find field, you can start typing in their last name or use the drop down box here. Um, so I've got a student who doesn't currently have any medications. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click add a row, and then I have a row available here to edit. So I'll click this edit link. And then this is where I have that medication drop down list. So it is kind of handy if you start typing in the, the title of the medication, and then you get all of these um, FDA approved medications that uh, go along with what you've typed in here. So I am going to pick Advil here. The form is tablet. Um, notification threshold, I have that checked, so I will get a notification when the inventory drops below, say, 10 doses. The date submitted, the current date automatically populates here. If it was a different date, I could change that by typing in the date or clicking on this calendar icon. If this was an as-needed only medication, I could click, uh, put a check mark here, and then any comments that I wanted to share with um, the front office or other health professionals I could put here in this comment box. And I'm going to go ahead and update this. And that saves that medication to this student. So that is how you go about adding a new medication and associating that with a student. Are there any questions on adding a student medication? No questions. No, Rachel, I, um, 
I was going to jump in and say that I feel like this is the hardest part, right? Like the first time always seems like lots of clicks and, you know, putting those in. But once you get a, a couple of kids in, I think it goes pretty quickly. Even, you know, maybe a couple minutes per kid. Has that been your experience? Yeah, it, it does. It's pretty quick. And I mean, it, it is probably a bit more work at the beginning of the school year as a whole bunch come in. But otherwise, you you just kind of get one at a time and it doesn't take that long. Yeah. Once you get this step done, the rest of it's pretty darn easy. So, I, you know, sometimes when I show nurses, it's like, wow, it's kind of a lot. Well, all those, you know, you can put as much information in as you want, right? You don't have to have to put a notification threshold in or whatever, although those are helpful items for you. Um, but just to kind of, to get it rolling, but we, you know, there are the certain items of what's the medication, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and when does it need to be given, right? Like those things need to be done to have the program function. And then it's really smooth sailing after that. Absolutely. Thanks, Paul. And welcome. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, the next thing we'll talk about then is managing that medication inventory. So once you have the medication associated with that student, then you can start logging the inventory. Managing a student's medication inventory in JMC office is an easy and efficient way to keep detailed records of medication stored and administered at school. Health and office professionals can easily update the number of medication doses in a student's medication inventory, keeping an accurate count of the medications on hand. Log quantities of medications as they're submitted to the health office and print a list of the medication inventory changes all from one place. So again, you're going to go to your health module, um, medication log, edit student medication in JMC office to be in logging medication quantities submitted to the health office. The first step is to enter a student's name in the fine field to begin managing the medication inventory for the selected student. Then you're gonna click the inventory tab to begin adding or subtracting medication in the inventory. So we added the medications here in this first tab and we come over to the next one to update the inventory. Step three, click the submit medication button to record the quantity of a medication in stock. If you need to make any changes to an existing inventory record, click the edit link, or if you wish to remove an inventory record, click the delete link. A fun fact, by default, the date and time fields will automatically be filled with the current date and time when the medication is received by the school office. However, if necessary, you can make adjustments to the date by selecting a different date from the calendar icon or modify the time by entering a specific time in the time field. Next, you're gonna to wanna to select the medication from the medication dropdown list to update its inventory quantity. Fun fact, only medications associated with the currently selected student on the medication tab are listed in the medication dropdown list. So this is kind of referring to that last step that we just completed. So you first have to you know, assign a medication to a student before you can start adding inventory. So you do have to follow that process here so that you can add the inventory after it's associated with the student. Uh, this fifth step, enter a number in the quantity field to reflect the number of doses added to the student's medication inventory. Helpful tip, enter additional comments in the comment field to provide more information about the specific inventory adjustments, such as who delivered it to the health office. And then you're wanna, going to want to click the OK button to update the medication inventory or click the close button to discard your changes. Another helpful tip to customize the display of the medications inventory, you can select your preferred options from the sort options and view options drop down lists. Uh, step seven, click the print button to print a copy of the medication inventory change records for the currently displayed student or click the export button to export the list as a CSV file. So we can take a live look here at managing medication inventory. All right, so we'll take a look at that pathway again. So we're in health, medication log, edit student medications. And now we had, we had added that Advil in our last step. So I'm gonna come over to the next tab here, click inventory. Um, I'm gonna keep this same student up here. Otherwise, if, if the student I was looking for wasn't already listed, I would find that student up here in the find field. So I am now going to submit the medication and I get this um, pop-up box here with the current date current time, and then the medications here that are associated with the student. So um, Alex just had one medication associated with him. So this is the only medication that I can add inventory for. So if, if he had more than one, I would see that here in this drop down list. So now I'm going to enter the quantity that was submitted to the health office, and this quantity is in doses. So I'm going to say that I have 20 doses of Advil on hand. If I wanted to add any additional comments, I could do this here. Um, if I wanted to say that this is, you know, for, for headaches, 
I can add that in. And then once I click OK, I can do that. Um, or if I wanted to say which parent it was that dropped it off or anything like that, any of those comments that are kind of associated with the um, submitting of the inventory to the health office, that's what I could keep, I could put in that comment box. Then I'm gonna to wanna to click okay to save my changes. And now I see here that um, I have uh, submitted this medication, my Advil and the quantity 20. And then as the student begins taking this medication, what's really handy is that the inventory automatically updates, making it really simple for the office to keep tabs on how many medications they're housing for their students. So that's kind of the gist of adding that medication inventory. If anybody has any questions on adding medication inventory, we can answer them now. Any questions, Linda? I don't see any. All right, anything you wanna add, Linda or Paul? No, you're just, I mean, you're showing that payoff, you know, and it's a little bit of work up front and then that payoff, so keep going. All right. And next we'll talk about creating the medication appointments. And this is kind of what Paul was just talking about. This is um, where JMC will save you a lot of time and help you stay very organized in your health office. So we'll talk here about recurring appointments. You can schedule recurring medication appointments in JMC office. It's the simple solution for students who take regular medications at school. Once students have recurring medication appointments scheduled, health and office professionals can easily preview or print a list of medication appointments for a day log the date and time the medication was administered, and even record if a student misses a dose. Improve communication and keep your kiddo safe and healthy by scheduling recurring appointments in JMC. So in JMC office, you're gonna to go to health, medication log, edit student medications, and then click the appointments tab. So you can see we're kind of working here from left to right. First, we add the medication, then submit the inventory, and now we're gonna schedule those appointments. Step one, enter the student's name in the fine field to schedule recurring appointments for that selected student. Step two, click the add row button to begin scheduling a recurring appointment. Step three, click the edit button to change appointment information. You can select an option from the medication dropdown list to indicate the medication that will be administered during this appointment. Um, step five, enter the date of the first appointment in the start date field or simply click the calendar icon to schedule the appointment. So kind of going back to the beginning, um, any of the medications that are associated with that student, then those are the medications that you can create those appointments for. And you wanna make sure that you have the start date indicated um, when, those, when those medication appointments should, be, should begin. Then you're gonna to wanna to enter the time in the time field to specify when the medication should be administered. Enter an amount in the dosage field to indicate the quantity of medication the student is to receive at each appointment. Enter the date of the last appointment in the date field or simply click the, the calendar icon to specify when the medication is no longer needed. Step nine, select one of the following radio buttons in the recurrence box to indicate how often the appointment will uh, recur. So you've got daily, you've got once, you've got weekly. So depending on how often the student needs to come to the office to take that medication, you'll choose one of those radio buttons. Step 10, click the update button to save your changes for this appointment or click the cancel button to discard them. And then we'll move on here to administering medications and then we'll take a live look at the whole thing. With the health module in JMC office, it's easy to keep tabs on student medications administered throughout the day by scheduling and documenting uh, daily medication appointments. This tool allows you to see a list of students taking medications each day, and then from the same page, log the time medication was given or note the reason a dose was skipped. Tracking medication appointments in this way ensures accurate medication inventory and detailed administration records. So to enter a medication appointment for a day in JMC office, you go to health, medication log, medication appointments for a day, select a date from the day dropdown list to view a list of students with scheduled medication appointments for the day. You can view those um, in 12 hour, 24 hour military time and then using that time format dropdown list as well. Then you're gonna to wanna to click the green check mark corresponding to the student's medication record log um, to log the time the medication was dispensed. So once you click that green check mark, so once you click this green check mark right here, um, the appointment is listed as administered and the time that you click that green check mark automatically populates here in this administered field. And then the handy thing, what I was kind of hinting at before is once you do that, once you click that you have administered a medication for a student, 
the remaining quantity in the student's inventory is going to automatically update. So if they if they missed an appointment and you put in here, like what we've got here, that the student was absent, doesn't affect the inventory. But if it is administered, then the inventory is automatically updated to reflect that the medication that you've administered. You can edit the time listed in the administered column if the medication was dispensed at a different time than what is shown to allow for accurate record keeping. Um, you can select a reason from the appointment drop down list to document why they didn't, why a student may not have taken a medication. So kind of what we talked about if a student was absent or whatever that reason might be that they didn't take their medication for the day. Um, step five, you can click the print medication appointments for a day button to create a copy for your reference when away from your computer. So no, this is pretty handy for school nurses. Like we said, they can't necessarily be there all day long. So they can always print um, their medication appointments for the day, leave it with a front office staff person. So they kind of have an idea of the kids that are going to be coming for their meds throughout the day. So we can take a live look at creating medication appointments. So again, we're in um, JMC office, we are in health, medication log, and we're just working our way across these tabs. So we started in medications, we've added our inventory, now we're gonna add an appointment. So I'm going to add a row. And now that I have this row here, I'm going to click edit. And again, I only have one medication associated for this student. So that's the only medication that I can add an appointment for. So I'm gonna say that the start date is today. This student is going to come in We'll actually say 12 p.m. They're going to get one dose and the end date. I'm going to just say maybe this is for two weeks. The student maybe had their tonsils out and just needs to have Advil for a couple of weeks. They're going to take it daily at 12 p.m. Once I have everything in here the way that it should look, I can go ahead and click update. And once I've updated um, and created this appointment for my student, now I can start looking at administering um, meds to students who have those recurring appointments. So again, I'm going to come, well, maybe just start here from home. I'm gonna to come to health, medication log, and then medication appointments for a day. So here's that list that we were just looking at. So I can select the day. I'm just gonna keep it as today, the 29th. And I see all of the students who take medications on a daily basis. And I can go ahead and um, click this uh, green check mark as my students come in. So here's Alex, the student that we've been working with. Uh, he's coming in for his noon medication. Once I click this green check mark, I see the, the time that it was administered that it was administered as well. And then you'll see I had um, a quantity, a starting quantity of 20, automatically my inventory is updated. And I think that this is really the best feature when it comes to administering meds in JMC. It keeps everything up to date without having to constantly keep track of the inventory in your meds cabinet. So that is what how you can um, keep track of medications that you're administering. If we did have a student that was not there for a day or a reason that they may not have taken the medication, you have all of these reasons here that you can select and then there, it will not affect their, um, their inventory, that remaining quantity there. So that's kind of it for um, creating appointments and administering medications. We can wait a second here, see if any questions are coming in. The other thing I would say, Rachel, is that um, it's, it's, you know, where I think it really is helpful is schools that don't have a full-time nurse. I mean, for a full-time nurse, it's great, right? You can click it off, but we have multiple people, uh, even more than one, administering the meds. Then that other person, right, the, the nurse sets up the meds, has full control over that. Then the secretary on the day that the nurse is not there or the nurse is sick can go in and just check those off if you give him or her read write access to the health module or you can print it off and the nurse can do it later right mm -hmm. but it, it's just a, it's easy for one person to do all the heavy lifting and the other person to be able to take advantage of that but then the nurse can still see and look um to what's been done what's been administered and things like that yeah absolutely there is a question mckenna asked i don't have a green check mark next to the appointment did i miss a step Hmm, that's a great question. That typically would mean that's been checked already. That means it's been checked already, right? So if you go back to your live look, sure. Rachel, um, it means that either they checked the, the check 
or um, they, if you change it from not administered, so if you didn't do that, so just change it to anything else, right? It takes the green checkbox away mm -hmm. because it means, so the green checkbox is there just to um, make it easily say that it's been administered. So that would be my first guess. I don't know if you can get a med over here to the screen without having the green checkbox there, but you could check it out. If not, you can always um, reach out to training at jmcnc.com and we can check it out. But that's typically means somebody's come in there and they've clicked one of those boxes because the check mark really just saves you the thing, the step of clicking. So if you want to go to appointment, so go to an appointment, the first student, right? Instead of clicking on the, uh, you're right there. No, you're right where you are. Right? Instead of clicking non appointment to administer, right? Which is theoretically two clicks, right? Oh, and then the time, that's why, right? So it's saving that green checkbox is changed, you know, put it there at whatever time you want. You know. um, it's saving you that step. That's what the green checkbox does. So I don't know if that helps that person or not, but that would be my <laughs> initial guess. Yeah, the green check mark is just kind of a nice little quick link to, to get that uh, medication administered. So click another one there, just to, uh, since we're, we're waiting to see the first has a follow-up question. So go click on another not administered. I just want to see, I want to see what that message said there. Yeah. And then change it to absent or something like that. Oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah. click okay there. Yeah, so that's just type there and active in there as well. So great. That message is there because uh, it's hard for the nurse, especially again, if you're a part-time nurse, to know which kids have been inactivated in your system. I don't know if you said this or not, Rachel. I was listening, but I don't know if it came up or not. Um, and so it's there to say, hey, these kids aren't there anymore. So if a kid wasn't active, and I know you talked about this at the beginning, but we'll give people a chance to put a question in. If you want to go back to the, the defined medications, okay, let me narrow down to the uh, defined medications. Oh, not defined. I'm sorry. The uh, edit student medication. Edit student medications. There, we go. there you go. You can show where you can discontinue the use one, right? It's, it's that student is no longer taking mm -hmm. that medication. You can edit that. That's another great thing to show as well. If the kid is not taking the medications, you can un or you can check that box right there mm -hmm. and then click update. You go ahead, just go ahead and do that. That's, that's fine. And then what you do have to do though, is if you want to, it says all future appointments for this uh, medication have been deleted. So they won't show up on that other screen. If you wish to add appointments, uh, for the student, you will need to add a new medication. We do this because if they, you know, you don't want to get mixed up about which pills are supposed to be given to which kid. So this discontinues it. Now go ahead and click OK there. The next step is, and you don't have to do this, but we recommend it, is click on the inventory tab. And you would have to zero this out because you either have to destroy the pills, right? Mm -hmm. Or you have to give them back. So what you would do is you would then go here and I think you would click other. It's been a little while since I've done this. So go ahead and click the other button there in the middle. And yep, no longer taking the med. And the reason is, you know, under whatever you want to do that they are destroyed or, you know, return to the parents, it's just return to parents. And then click okay at the doses. So they've got 19 left, 19, so put 19, yep. Click okay. And this will zero it out, right? Um, to say that there's zero quantity. So if a student is not taking a med anymore, you have to say they're not taking it on the previous screen and then zero that out. Uh, you know, have to do this. I mean, if you got audited, somebody would wonder where those pills went. This is kind of the best practice there. Great. That's all I've got, Rachel and Linda. Thanks, Paul. I don't see a follow-up question, so I think I hope that answered your question. All right. Then we are going to finish up with some JMC news and upcoming events. All right. Um, so today we, we went through utilizing JMC's health medication log. Um, tomorrow we've got a really fun webinar coming up introducing the refreshed new family enrollment portal. Um, then we are already thinking the holidays. Happy holidays from JMC and reporting SS students for Iowa non-public schools. Uh, the second week of December, we're going to look at Minnesota early education reporting, uh, as well as the features of JMC's collaboration tools. And then moving into that third week, working with JMC's Google Classroom integration and the features of that refreshed new family enrollment portal. So we're going to introduce the portal tomorrow. And then later in December, we're going to look at some of those features. 
calling all shared superintendents now through March 31st of 2024. If you switch your second district to JMC, you'll get it free. Give our sales team a call at 800-524-8182 extension 2 or email at sales at jmcinc.com to learn more. Um, discover the convenience of our refresh new family enrollment portal, what I was just kind of hinting at there. New families can now easily fill out the online application at their convenience day or night without the need to visit the district office for a paper form. Join us alongside the JMC training team tomorrow at 1230 for an overview of what's new and improved. Learn how these changes ensure accurate data entry and how they are certain to benefit your school. Don't miss this opportunity to explore the enhanced new family enrollment portal benefits. And we're looking for a few JMC superstars. At almost every school, we find an unofficial JMC go-to person. This is the person colleagues contact if they have a quick question about a module. You may hear them sharing JMC tips and tricks with a colleague over lunch. When a JMC training comes up, they're the one nominated to go for the school. Does that sound like someone you know, or maybe it's you? Whoever it is that came to mind, we want to meet them. We are, we've learned along the way that these JMC superstars make the best client service specialists, and we're looking for passionate part-time client service specialists. So you can apply by submitting your resume and cover letter to hr at jmcinc.com. And we always like to encourage you to be social with us. A great way to stay up to date on all things JMC is through our social media presence. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn at online JMC or our blog, jmcinc.com slash news. And on behalf of myself, Paul and Linda, and everyone at JMC, thank you so much for attending this webinar. And thank you for choosing JMC.